Good afternoon, family. Uh, I'm coming to you again to bring a word here on this last Sunday of January. It's come and gone, y'all. And so here we are still as Christians looking to hopefully do the right thing in this new year. And of course, many of us have already fallen off the boat. Uh, but I'm still coming before you petitioning you on a behalf of what I believe, according to God's word, things that he does desire of us to do in the body of Christ. We've already started this year with many things happening that we would rather had, uh, rather not have happened to us. And to God be the glory, the government shutdown is over temporarily. We don't know what's going to happen next, but what we do know is that the prayers of the righteous avail much. And so we must continue to pray, pray without ceasing, and trust God in everything that we do. So again, I'm coming to you on behalf of uh, Run and Shout Evangelical Ministries to bring you a word today that I pray will bless you and will encourage you to run on and see what the end is going to be. Amen. Father, in the name of your precious son, Jesus, Lord God, we bless you and we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've done, Lord God, be it good, bad, or indifferent, Lord God, because we know with everything that happens, you intended, Lord God, to grow us up one way or the other. You never do anything to harm us, Lord God. You come that we would have not just life, but life abundantly. And sometimes that comes in growing us up in our storm. So, Father, as I prepare to minister this word, Lord God, I ask that you would be with me, Lord God. Decrease Sharon and increase yourself inside of me. Let the drippings from the cross. Lord God, saturate me in such a way, Lord God, that everything that will come out will truly represent that which is Christ. Lord God, now as I move forward again, we thank you that you've allowed this government to be back open. We thank you for knowing that the government is upon your shoulder. Lord God, we thank you that you continue to take care of different ones, Lord God, and we lift up those that are homeless, hungry, Lord God, and that need shelter, Lord God clothes, food, whatever the case may be. We ask you, Lord God, that you would allow us to be a piece of the puzzle to make things better in their lives, Lord God. Now, Father, allow us to be edified, you be glorified, and the very devil that seeks to destroy us be horrified. In Jesus' precious and righteous name, we say amen. Amen again. To God be all the glory. Again, I'm coming to you uh, with a word that I believe God has given me to bless not just you, but for me as well. And uh, in this world, this world, this word, y'all, yeah, there's something on my face here. Um, this word comes today. It is, uh, it's, it's. It deals kind of with what I talked about on last week that we have been called to be a blessing. Uh, and it also kind of goes back to some some messages that I preached uh, towards the end of 2018, mid-year, regarding the spirit to which we do things in because too often we are not operating the way that we should. We think just because we want to do something to make somebody feel good uh, or that it's the right thing, that's what our mom and our daddies told us to do. And so we do that. But I, I've said so often before, it's not what you do is how you do it and especially for all those of us who consider ourselves to be Christians and to be used by God there's a spirit to which we are to do all things and too often regardless to how good you think you may be doing you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself but is it God is this thing that I'm doing in the spirit to which God would have me to do it in and if it's not if you're not sure read the word you know, we have Google at our fingertips these days, so you, you can go to Google. But this word is coming back at you again today with a new description, a new title, Where's the Love? Where's the love? I had an experience at a church uh, last week, and it really bothered my soul, my spirit, everything that is me. Anybody that knows my my previous life, my before Jesus, my before Christ uh, into there knows that I would fight you in a jackrabbit minute. Don't even play with me because we're going to go at it like that. But I thank God for saving me because, you know, sometimes we're going to have our greatest battles, not so much with people out in the world, 
but it's going to be those folks that call themselves holy, sanctified, speaking in tongues, fire baptized, and, 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 and we need to pray for them. I'm just saying like that. We need to pray for them. But anyway, I experienced uh, something at a church and it really broke my heart. And so I know that I'm not the only one that uh, has experienced different things because I, I, we see stuff and we really need to not just see stuff and walk away from it. You know what? I, I think it was Michelle Obama that talked about she, she doesn't aspire to work in, in politics per se. She would rather be able to do stuff, you know, right in her community and things of that nature. Because sometimes when you can galvanize people together to help them, that might be the better way. And then you can take it on to those that are able to help change the laws and bring about things for a better way. And so I'm bringing this because, again, it's not the first time that I saw this sort of behavior, and it won't be the last time that I see it. But the thing that bothers me is that I want to make sure those of you that have taken the time out to listen to me, some of you have probably already been to your prospective churches. Uh, I'm, I just got in from service myself. And, uh, you know, so we, we, we're church people. We're trying to do the right thing. And as I say to run and shout all the time, you're on an interview the minute you wake up and God has given you breath in your body to live. People watching you. They're watching everything you do. Things that you think folks don't see. God is watching you. People are seeing what you do and you, it's going to be pretty tough to try to sell somebody to come and be a part of your ministry when what they're looking at makes them turn up their nose or want to vomit or whatever the case may be. So my, my thought was just to bring this at you because it was certainly on my heart. And clearly, I believe God wanted me to move forward with that word with you all because he gave me some good stuff. Amen. So my scripture text that I'm coming from is 1 John. I'm going to give you a few scriptures, but the first is 1 John chapter 4, verses 20 through 21. And it reads, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, meaning God, that he who loves God must love his brother also. So needless to say, when I was in the church and this situation took place and the person almost, almost bolted me over. I mean, I, I was opening up the door for him, almost completely ran me over, never said, hi, uh, you ugly, I don't like you, thank you for opening up the door. There was nothing to even acknowledge the idea that, number one, I let you in. Number two, you when my mama said, if somebody does something kind for you, you say thank you. But wait a minute, this is the body of Christ. I, I You shouldn't even have to think twice. But if that wasn't bad enough, what began to happen, this was a, a, a prayer night going on, and then there was going to be this service. And, you know, what disturbed me was that when the service and everything started, the first thing I heard this person do was start speaking in tongues. And I had to do a Macaulay Culkin. What is this? Are you kidding me? You just near about knocked me down to the floor, didn't speak, didn't even just tell me if you just didn't like me, and you speaking in tongues? Wait a minute. This word is clear. How in the world can you say that you love God and clearly there was no love shown? So again, my message is, where's the love? Because this sort of behavior will eat up in your congregation or your group, your whatever it is you may have, like a cancer if you don't stop it. And no, things are not going to always be absolutely like we want it to be, but this sort of behavior, if it doesn't change, it's going to be like a cancer and eat up and destroy everything you attempt to do. So it was so on my heart that I wanted to, to talk about this thing because it made me wonder, where is the love? Was was that? Where is the love? When, like, that song, y'all. And because it just, it really destroyed me. Now, what I do want you all to do is go to Philippians, and this will be in your own time, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. I'm going to read this one. It says, therefore, 
If there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, by being like-minded, by being like-minded is Christ, amen, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing let nothing, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. So again, this is the other situation. It's that I know that this particular ministry is looking to grow. I know that this ministry is trying to get somewhere to be better. And the very thing that they're not understanding, the reason things aren't happening as they should, because God ain't going to let his people get beat up. And sometimes everything that might look good to you because you got this one person in there doesn't necessarily mean that it's God. And you, me, we can't allow these things to happen without calling it out. Pastors, we have been called to teach. If our people are offending one another and other one another and can't show love as Christ did, when people walk into our churches, when people think that they're going to get a good word from us or at least a kind word from us or be able to support us when things are happening, that's a problem. And we don't do anything about it. So it behooves us to stop allowing this mess to happen that's going on. And if, because you, because you, you come into me and you, you think that I should be willing to pour out and do all of what I can do. Yes, there's some things that God will certainly take care of because His Word says that He will avenge us in everything. But there are things that He's also called His leaders to put a stop to. You gotta stop this bickering and fighting within the body of Christ because this is what the word, uh, what the word says here. Let me find it. Uh, it says, um, okay, it said conceit. Where's that word? It says, this is verse number three. It says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness. So what happens when people see a new face come in sometimes, you know, your, your spirit may sometimes uh, precede you. You know, uh, I remember when uh, my friend Cheryl and I were going to uh, UDC out of high school. When we got there, people started talking about, oh, we know y'all. We heard about y'all. They had heard about us, how good we were as, as flag twirlers. We could march and do that thing and, you know, make it work. So our reputation preceded us. So people, especially in the body of Christ, not only will your reputation precede you, but the spirit of the Lord, because the word of God says that we are to try the spirit, know the spirit, by the spirit. When we try it, we will be able to see and know if this is something that we want or not. And so when people, because see, the enemy is afraid of you. When people see you coming and they know what precedes you, they know what you're working with, they know what God is doing in your life, that thing will mess them up. And before they can think about being a part of, because remember last week I talked about we are the body of Christ. The body of Christ means that we work together. It's going to be a little difficult to work with you, my sister, to work with you, my brother, and you trying to bowl me over. Or you saying things that you know you ought not be saying. First of all, I'm a child of God. Second of all, of all why do you want to put yourself in the position of God having to avenge me because of your foolishness or anything else that you do to somebody's life? So you got to stop that stuff. Stop it already. This world is in a crisis. We have a government that has been doing things that God, yes, there are things that need to be made better, but God is not looking at Trump. God put Trump there. He allowed Trump to be there. He's looking at us. What are we doing? How can we come together and build a big store where people, when they have hardships, they can come to it without having to cut off an arm and a leg to get in or worrying about you mistreating them because you think you're doing something to somebody. Unless God had not breathed into your life today, you'd be gone from the face of the earth. So stop it already. We must do better. People watching us. People looking at us. They're looking to see what we're going to do. They're not thinking about the government. Half the people in the world, not, not everybody, 
but there's a good majority of the people in the world don't even know or care about what's happening in the government. And that's bad within itself. That's a message for another time. But the reality of it is, there's something that we're supposed to be doing. And we don't fail them, we fail God. Because God is dependent on us, especially when we roll it up into the church and thinking we are holier than thou, and he come and shot him and What? Wait a minute, I'm the person you just bust through the doors I was opening it up. Couldn't greet me? You all afraid because you see a new face in the building? And you recognize a new spirit in the building. So before you would lose your space, you figure you're going to distract me and make me go. The devil is a lie. Because first of all, if God has it for me, it's going to be for me. And ain't nothing you can do about it. And that's the attitude that we have to operate in based upon what God's word says for us. He will avenge us. I begin to think about Joseph. When Joseph's life happened the way that it did, he was able to say, you intended it to, for, for harm, but God all along had intended it, not even just for God, for Joseph's good, but for their good. So you're trying to hurt and, 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 and harm the very thing that God is going to use to help you. What, what, come on, y'all. You can tell I'm a little, uh, you know, because I don't fight no more. I don't fight no more. I, I, I use the word of God to fight with now. It messed me up. It messed me up because I'm trying to understand. If we're reading from the same Bible, what is happening here? What is taking place that we are perceiving this word of God to be so different? I mean, come on. He will break it down for you. And, and, and not only that, we have all of these different interpretations that you can get it in if, if you're not sure what you're reading. But we're not supposed to operate like that. People shouldn't have to be afraid to go into the house of the Lord. It confused me. And it don't take much to confuse me. But I was confused, y'all. I was, I was, I was confused. Because first of all, I don't want nothing that ain't mine. Okay, contrary to those that think that I take things that aren't that, that don't belong to me, you're a lie, and the devil is a lie that's residing in you because any and everything God ever wanted me to have, he has given it to me, and I didn't have to lift a finger because what God has for you is for you, and God knows how to do just what he's going to do to get it to you, and so if you just stay right before God, you can receive everything that he has for you. So, okay, so how did I handle it? How did Pastor Sharon Harley Yvette handle this? Well, 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 the first time I left the building, I got to be honest, because I sat there and I already prayed and everything. And, you know, then I just said, you know what, maybe this isn't for me tonight. And, uh, and so anyway, I left and I had just gone because I was invited. But uh, I did leave and I sat in my car and then I began to see some people that I know. And I, okay, well, all right, God, you help me because I still got to represent, right? Y'all always talk about represent when they threw me in jail, still had to represent Jesus. So a sister girl had to represent. So I went back in and, and it got worse because all I could see that was going on was chaos and confusion because all it takes is one bad apple, one bad spirit to spoil everything that's supposed to be taking place. And that's why it behooves the preachers, the leadership in these ministries to do what God's word has said, to train them, teach people what they're supposed to do. Not everybody's going to read their, their word, but this is what God is saying. And if we don't do that, then we fail God. And we fail others that are dependent on us. So we have to get into the place where we are able to withstand the evil things, the, the wiles of the devil that are going to come up against us. But then what are we going to do about it? You know, it's, it's the whole idea, as I said, uh, when, when, when I learned of or well, saw that the government was going to reopen, that's wonderful. But it's only going to reopen for, what, till the 15th if they don't come up with something. So there's some things that still have to happen 
if, if people are going to be able to still have their jobs. So this is not a time to, to, to sit down and not do anything. No, this is the opportunity to begin to do some things to find out, okay, how do we change how we do things? Those that are just waiting for people to take care of them, you know, maybe you need to put on your entrepreneurship mindset. You know, there's something that God has given you to do where you don't necessarily have to be dependent on others. And, and then we have to pray for our workers, those, those that go out there and they work so things can happen because it's a trickle-down effect. If these people can't work and have their jobs, they don't get paid to pay us. I, I work in a dental practice. People don't work. Where, where I um, contract at is right there in the area of dental, uh, dental of, of the government workers. If they don't come to work, they're not coming into D.C. to uh, to do no, no dental work from Virginia and Montgomery County and places like that. So, I mean, when you contract it, you're totally dependent on what somebody else is doing. So that hurts everybody. And a lot of what I do is by phone, but still, if I ain't got nobody called because ain't no bills need to be collected, hey, I'm without work. So it's just a trickle-down effect, so we need to be praying, if nothing else, okay? So there's work for us to do. Never a time to be caught up with, with, with being inferior of what others are coming into or operating in a way that we can't come together as the body of Christ. Because the problem is, if we're the body of Christ, then the body can't do if it's what it's intended to do if you're off doing something you shouldn't do or treating your brothers and sisters in a way that you ought not be treating a man. And it becomes a cancer. And all of us know somebody that's been afflicted by cancer. Yesterday was 15 years that my mother died in my arms from stage four adult leukemia. My son Edmund was battling it at the same time. 15 years she's been gone because of that nasty disease. But there's something we can do about it as the body of Christ to not let that these disease, that illness get in our churches. Don't allow it to be in your spirit and vex everything that God is trying to do for you. I don't care how good you think you are until it's God. He don't want it. It's just like the woman with, with that had that the, the, the widow's might. Yeah, you might be able to give 10000 but if you're giving that 10000 and you're giving it because you think you're so good, you conceited and think you so such as much as Jake, uh, Bishop Jakes would say, God rather have. What I got to bring to the table, which might just be two cents. Because what I am given is coming from my heart. It's what I desire to give to God, to bless the people of God for kingdom building. And it came from my heart. He, first of all, God don't need you. God don't need me. But he, we are here to be used by him for the upbuilding of the kingdom. You can't do it by yourself. You need me, my brother and my sister, because we are the body of Christ. Talk about me. Say what you want to say about me. But until we come together, when God cracks the sky, the word of God says he's not going uh, into Satansville first. It says that he's coming back to the church. Why? Because he has an expectation that we are not honoring. What are we doing? It's a cancer. And this cancer, we have the ability to stop, to destroy. And you don't have to use chemo to take everybody out. Although I, I read Lee P. Washington many years ago when I was there at Reed Temple. He, I remember him saying one time, the only way to clear up some of the stuff that's going on in the AME system, he said, put all 12 bishops in, a, in an airplane and drop them in the ocean. You know? I think they call that genocide. Just get rid of everybody. We just start over. Sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you got to do that. But why? When you have the ability to do right. And you know why I know you have the ability to do right? Because God's word says he makes all things anew. When you accepted him as Lord and, Je as, as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he made you a new creation. So anything that you do that, that offends the word of God, it's because you made a decision to do it. It's because you wanted to do it. 
So don't give me the excuse about, oh, you know, I, I try. No. That's why when somebody falls in Christianity, like I fell, I was able to repent. And that's a sin you'll never catch me in, again in. Why? Because I am a new creation in Christ. Because he's made me anew. And as often as I read his word, it continues to renew me daily. So that that thing or anything else, I won't have to be bothered with too much. But I do get frustrated when I see Christians not operating the way that they want somebody to believe. Because you're going to go out and you're going to start murmuring, uh, murmuring at some, some language that you think God is going to hear. And God's still stuck over here with how you almost knocked that lady down. And you know who that lady is. You've seen her. You liked her the first time you saw her because she wasn't a threat. But the minute you thought, wait a minute, something might be happening here. Now you want to get rid of me and, and have a means necessary you can do that. That's what you're going to do. But here's the problem. Devil, if you wanted me, you should have taken me a long time ago. Because now this chicky here, she sold out for Jesus. Even your nastiness. Even your nastiness, because yes, I forgive, but I don't forget. I, I, I do know how to defend myself, but I fight now because I know that the Lord said he will fight my battle. So you're not going to deal with me. You're going to deal with the God that loves me, the God that says that he will protect me, he will avenge me. And even if your nastiness comes up against me to cause me harm, what Joseph say, you intended it for evil. But God intended it for good. So thank you for being that walking and stepping stone. Because everything you set out to do to distract me, it won't work. It won't work. Because now I am wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus. Running on to see what the end is going to be. Because why? He has promised me some things. Just as much as he loves me. And there is nothing that anybody's going to do about that to take that love from me. Because God is just good on his own if he never does another thing for me. There are already things that if I was put on the witness stand to testify who he is in my life, I'd be there to kingdom come. Because that's just how good God has been to me. And we need to change how we operate. We need to change what we're doing to hurt people. We need to change how we're doing things to, to cause people hardship all because we think somebody going to take, take over what we're doing. I don't want what you're doing because it ain't what God called me to do. Everybody, even if it's the same thing, God's going to tweak it somewhere for you to do it. Amen. So we don't have to be caught up on what somebody's going to do or take from us because we're in this thing together. First uh, Corinthians is a scripture text that I want to leave with you today, but I'm going to go to something right quick. Uh, but it's, it's going to be first Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 through 30. And, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just read for you 20 through yeah, 20 through 23 in a second. But first, I want to go back to my points. Walking in obedience. Walk in obedience. And we know what God's word says about obedience. And it does not include being nasty to your brothers and sisters. His word says that we are to be one another's keeper. We are to bear up one another. If our brother is down, then we're down with him as we're trying to pull him up. If our sister's down, we down with her till we try to get her back up. We in this thing together. Who are you competing with? Can't be me. Because what God has for me, he has for me. Stay in your lane. I'm going to stay in my lane because when we stay in our lane, we get to where we're trying to go easy. When I, when I do um, consulting for businesses, one of the main things I, I talk to them about is the efficiency of how a practice runs, the efficiency of how things can work where everybody can win. And it starts from the moment somebody walks into a door. If the person at the front desk, 
doesn't set the tone for what's going to happen by the time somebody gets called back to an operatory or whatever type of business it is, you already on a slippery hill down because why the tone was set there. And then if on the way back, as they're looking around and they're seeing what's going on, if that's not pleasing to the eyes and you do, whoever else might be in there acknowledging them that they're there, all of those things play to how well this person's visit or this appointment is going to go. Because why? We are all in a place to do one thing. Some may have multiple rules, uh, 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 gifts. But the point is, as well as I can do mine, as well as you can do yours, by the time it gets to when that person is in the chair or having their appointment for whatever that appointment is and they're ready to leave out, they have had such a phenomenal experience because why? From the door to the moment they finished whatever was going on, the reason that they were there, it was all a perfection because everybody was in their lane. Here's the next thing. From the parking lot to the pulpit, Unless we all do what we have been called to do, nothing can go right because people are looking at the body of Christ. I cannot do what God has called me to do unless I have those that are able to do things uh, in my absence. I'm extending the ministry. I live in North Carolina now. If there weren't people in Maryland able to continue that ministry, thank God for them. You know, I, I mean, evangelist Pamela Trent, I mean, they're amazing. My children, other members, I, what would I do? Because we're the body of Christ. All of us are needed to do this thing. What would I do? How would I even be able to come down here and reestablish my life back in North Carolina and start a ministry if I'm worried about what's going on up there? So God has to do things to help us out. But you got to stay in your lane. I have to stay. So perfect what God has given you. Don't try to take over what somebody else is doing. Perfect that thing that God has given you so we don't have no cancers up in here. And number three, y'all going to like this. I've said it before. What would Jesus do? Well, I got an answer. He's already told us about it. It's in the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. It's the basic instructions before leaving earth. Everything we need to know from how we treat our brothers and sisters to how we operate when there's death to how we operate when there's famine in the land. He's put it all there. How to raise children. He says spin not the rod. That means tear them behind up when they get out of order. That means that, no, they don't get to tell you what they're not going to do because they don't even realize they're here right now. So if you, well, no, don't take your child out. But the Bible says train them. That means you're giving them something that they don't know. Amen? So God has given us everything that we need to know and operate in, in the scriptures, so that we can fulfill it by showing love, so that people are not seeing us with our big old faces plastered all over everything and cred credentials from A to Z. But can't speak. Hmm. I'd rather be a, 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 in a building all by myself before I, I find myself around a bunch of cantankerous spirits allowing themselves to be used by the enemy, who the word of God has made clear comes to steal, kill, and destroy. How much sense does that make, my brothers and sisters? We must do better. And God has given us the opportunity to do that because here we are again, we are awake this morning. God has found it not rob robbery to breathe life into us, the breath of life, giving us another opportunity to get it right. So we are still right now, anybody that's listening to me and, and hopefully heard your perspective, uh, pastors today, this is another opportunity to get it right so that God can use you because otherwise we operate like a bike with a flat tire going nowhere fast and it's just a mess and we don't want our churches looking like a mess. We don't want that. If it offends God, it should offend us. And we 
should not want somebody just coming in and saying, oh, what a beautiful facility. Oh, that person is so nice. Oh, my goodness. And behind the scenes, y'all don't even talk to one another. You can't even do the best of what you can do because you won't communicate. That's what I love about the Tower of Babel story, because even God had to acknowledge, even though their motives were wrong, because they had come together, they were able to do this thing. So we have to do better. We must do better. So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 20 through 23, it says, But now indeed there are many members, yet one body, many members, one body, many members, one body, the body of Christ, okay? 21, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head say to the feet, I have no need of you. No much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Don't be messing with somebody because they don't look like you think they should look. This word is saying that, the weaker are the necessary. So take your mouth off of people and help them to get where God is trying to take them. All your selfishness. And those members of the body which we think to be like, this, 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 this is not my word. I'm, I'm reading it. I, I'm reading this fundamental. I'm a DC educated kid and I can get this. It says in verse 23, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. Lord have mercy. On these we, the triune God, bestows better honor. <laughs> and our unrepresentable parts have greater modesty. So well, I'm going to honor them more, but my expectation of you is to operate in modesty. Get out of here. <laughs> what a God we serve. So what's the problem? What's the problem? Why are we treating each other so awful? You don't like me because I don't dress like you dress or I don't operate like you operate. So what? My gifts are still just as important because that's what the Bible just said. That's what my daddy just said. So why? I don't look like you. I don't talk like you. So you're going to cut me out the group. You know, you don't want me to be a part of your clique. I don't want to be a part of your clique because I'm a leader, not a follower. I don't follow long enough to know what a good leader, what it takes to be a good leader. You obviously missed it all. So we have to stop this cancer in the body of Christ. We have to begin to do better than what we're doing. So God can be pleased with what he's done. We don't want him to do as he said with, with, with Samuel and Saul, where he has to reject you because you failed to do the right thing. Uh-uh. Don't let God regret sending his son, Jesus, loving us so to the point of that cross. And don't mistake it. It wasn't nails that went through his feet. They were stakes. They had flat ends going through his feet and hands. That's what it was. And he knew what he was going to have to do with, deal with because he understood what a crucifixion was. He's gone through the crucifixion for us. Don't you be trying to crucify me because simply because he's already done it. I've already been justified through him. So keep your hands and your mouth off me. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. That's for the body of Christ. Stop hurting one another when we have a work to do. A powerful work to do. And God gave us a glimpse of that through what we just experienced in this government shutdown. How many families were hurt? It doesn't matter whose fault it was. What's going on? What their living conditions are? Nobody should ever be made to stop working that gets up on a daily basis and goes out to make a living. It ain't right. We don't have that right to hold people hostage, be it in the government or in the church. Because the truth of the matter is the, the building to which we have these services in, that's God's place. I had a pastor to say to me this morning, he, he likes when I come and be a part of the ministry and that I make myself so at home because why? I can do it because it's my father's house. I can be at home because it's my father's house. Only a stranger.
Elisha walks in and can't enjoy himself. But everywhere that there's the Spirit of the Lord, this sister here, they ain't a person from D.C., Maryland, Virginia, Jamaica, North Carolina, South Carolina, that can say that they've seen my face and didn't say, wow, she's a runner. That's right. Because as long as God gives me breath in my body and keep these members operating the way that they're supposed to, I'm going to run on and see what the end is going to be. Because why? That's the lane I'm in. That's the lane I'm in. I have had people say to me, it was not knowing me as a, with a personal relationship, but because of what, what they watched in me. When things got bad in their lives and they were going to do things, and I'm talking to unto death, they thought of me and the smile, having not ever seen a man with me or me, and this is when my children were young, and, and, and I was always happy because I'm, I'm happy in Jesus. The joy of the Lord that resides deep down inside me, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. So that's why I operate like this. That's why I'm good with who I am. And that's what gives me the passion to be able to speak to you and prayerfully encourage you, empower you to never take a back step with somebody trying to cause you to not operate in that which God has given you. Yes, everything has to be pruned and everything has to be in decency and in order. But if somebody is threatened by that which God has put in you to use to his glory, shame on them. You continue doing what God has called you to do because the word of God has already promised you protection. You are protected. You are protected. I'm protected. We will not allow a cancer to come up in us, in the body of Christ, and cripple us from doing what God has called us to do. Where is the love? Where is the love? The love comes from God because what he has said in his word is that we are to be as he is. So where is the love? It's in us. As new creatures in Christ, we can do this thing. Make your decision today that no more. Don't get upset what you think somebody else might be doing if, if that might be a spirit that's in you. I was sharing with my son the other day, you know, we, we pretty sure I was disappointed when, when I tried to be a airline stewardess when I was coming out of high school because I love to travel. And, and, but I didn't make the height requirement at that time. That thing hurt me real bad. And then I wanted to join the Marines and my mama wouldn't sign for me. That hurt me because, again, I love to travel. <laughs> so I was trying to get up out of Eastgate by any means necessary. <laughs> but it wasn't happening. Because why? Because God wanted me here. I don't know what would have happened had I done those things, had those doors opened up for me. But what I do know here is on this side, some of the things that were in me, some of the things that I was experiencing, had I been an airline stewardess? Oh, no, I, I can't promise you anything. You know why I can't promise you anything? Because I know it was only because of Jesus that when they threw me in jail, I survived. Because I was able to operate in the spirit of God versus my flesh. Because the flesh is weak, is wicked, and the heart is desperately vexed. It is just not going to do right. Only time you're going to get to being halfway decent is as you renew your mind, which is in the Bible, in the word of God. Until we do that, our expectations are very low or will be low. There's a, I mean, pfft. some of us just got it like that, but I know me. I know how I was. So I thank God while the road wasn't pleasant to where I am today. Still things that are happening in my life. But what I do know is in spite of what I feel, how I feel, God's word, his promise to me, his promise to you is that it may not feel good, and I'm paraphrasing, but it will work to your good. And anything that he has called, he will provide for. So my family, go out. Head up, shoulders back. Walk. 
with all of the dignity and 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 what's that? Uh it's another word. I can't think about it, but pizzazz that you can because your father in heaven looks to you to be everything he said you are and not ever back back because of what man's fear is of who you are. The devil is a lie. So if there's anybody that does not know the Lord and Savior, even if you've backslidden, this is your opportunity to give yourself to the Lord. Open up your heart to God and, and accept him and that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Acknowledging that he is the son of God. Acknowledging that, yes, he died on that cross, but he was risen on that third day and now sits on the right hand of God the Father. That he is the one that advocates on your behalf, on my behalf, to the Father. And because he went to that cross, there is nothing that you cannot do. What's my favorite scripture, y'all? First thing, First John 5 and 5. All together, who is he? That overcomes the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. We're overcomers. We are in this thing together as overcomers because why? We didn't say it, but God said it. And because he said it, it settles it in the heavens. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. This thing is done. Just be good with who you are so you don't have to get your emotions all up in the air because you feel threatened by what somebody may or may not be, be doing. That person might be the very person that's going to help to catapult you to where you're going. So let's rethink some things on how we do them in life. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you've backslidden again, all you got to do is say, Father, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Repent. Turn away from those things. Okay? And keep on moving. Don't let nobody hold you back or hold over your head what you did. It's the t-shirt said, the next time the devil remember, reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. A good friend of mine, she and I, I probably shouldn't say it, but uh, here it goes, Shay. Uh, before you proceed too fast, I ain't been saved that long, okay? Watch how you do some things. Watch how you do some things, okay? Because God's people, we're not punks. We're not wimps by no means, which is why we need to operate in a bold mindset. Because even Jesus, who came lowly as a dove, when those people began to use the temple as a, a, a den of thieves, he knocked them tables over. That's what I said to Rem Washington when I, we were talking about me joining the ministerial staff. I said, you sure me? I said, because you know I ain't like none of them folks up there. I said, I believe in the rebel side of Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Why? Because I've been some places, I've seen some things, and I don't like those people, the spirit that's in those people who think they got it all together, all because of fear. And so they try to make you think something other than. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. We serve a better God. Oh, God, he doesn't want just even us to have his good. He, he, he wants a friend of mine said, it's God's good, better, and best. What you want? I want his best. Amen. I want his best. And so whatever I have to go through, I can go through it knowing that when this is all said and done, it's going to be with some wonderful things happening. Now, again, none of what I say matters in your life unless you've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Let this be the day. Let this be the time that you repent. Again, it ain't nobody's business what you're going through or what you're dealing with. That's between you and God. But Romans 8 and 1, and this is what I've kept with me, that there is now therefore no condemnation from them that are in Christ Jesus. I'm in Christ Jesus. I don't care what you say about me, what you think you're going to say about me to hinder me. The devil is a lie and the spirit that works inside of you to try to make me think anything other than what I know. Pastor Price always say, some things you just got to know. What you know, y'all, what you know, what we know is that no good thing will our God withhold from us. Why? Because he loved us enough that Jesus went to that cross to deal with everything. He was our ransom for all things good. And now we can just trust him and depend on him. So I thank you. I pray that this has left an indelible mark on you, that you will be able to go back to these scriptures and, and see what God is saying. 
Look at what God's word is saying and watch how we treat one another. Don't allow a cancer, even if it holds the face of a Christian, to partake in things concerning God. You don't want people running off because of one person, two people that are insecure, because that's what it all boils down to. Don't let it happen. You, as a pastor, you have the authority by the word of God to speak to those things. God char charges us to deal with those things. Because we can't send you out as disciples until we know that you are able to handle other people. And if there's ever going to be a person hurt, that ain't going to be good. Everybody know when it comes to working at Overcomers, let me find out that somebody's been hurt by somebody that's working there. And these people already come in hurt. That ain't going to go too well. Okay? I'm not going to fight you. But you ain't going to be there long unless you change your ways. Because God does not want us hurting one another. We're to help one another. And we can have a healthy love, a healthy fear that we should have for Christ. But there are things that we, some things we're doing, we know we're just wrong. So let's remember, God has a plan for us. And our plan is that we would live and not die. And that he will give us everything that he has promised according to his word. So if it lines up with his word, it's for us. So we don't have to fight other people about what we think they might be coming to take from us. No, the body of Christ, when you look at all the people in the different states that were hurting, when they interview people on the news from these places, okay, look at that times, a number that I can't even say out of my mouth, that's the body of Christ. Now, how do you not have your own personal role that God has designed just for you in it? He's got a place for you. So you don't have to fight anybody. You don't have to be caught up on what other people are doing. All you have to do is thank God for what he has done in your life and the allowance that he's given for you to be a part of such a great body. Amen. Go to Run and Shout Ministries, the number one, dot org. Uh, and there you will see what we have been doing. And there you can also give by PayPal, Giveify, and the Cash App. Uh, you could also go to YouTube and subscribe there. You could push the button right there. I would appreciate it if you go to YouTube. And I'm going to try to do this thing like I did uh, a few weeks ago. So you can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on, so follow us on Twitter. And there's something else that we do. But then you can subscribe to us on YouTube. But go to Run and Shout Ministries, the number one, dot org. All of that is there, right there for you to be able to see what a blessing you've helped us to be. And also, you can bless us more financially or if there are clothes, items that you have for us to pick up for our evangelism outreach. We can do that there. Our number's there. Our address is both here in North Carolina as well as in Maryland. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you later in the week. Go be about God's business.